So we're just almost approaching Checkpoint Charlie now, which it looks like it is a bit Disneylandy, not gonna lie. But we were like, why is it called Checkpoint Charlie? We don't know for sure, but look, you're now entering the American sector carrying weapons off duty, forbidden obey traffic rules. And then it's written in Russian, in French, and in German. Um, and then there's the Hard Rock Cafe down there. So yes, yeah, definitely an American bit. But when Berlin was divided into four, this would have been the bit for you to go into the American bit, the American zone. So that is why it's called Checkpoint Charlie. Indeed. Let's have a look at it. And there you go. And there it is, everyone's having their photos taken by it. Checkpoint Charlie. look around and yeah it's pretty busy in here for a Monday at like 6 6 30 in the evening it's pretty busy but I feel like this is gonna be really fun we almost didn't do it but we're doing it we're in and it was a lot of money not really 27 euros but yeah we'll see you all the way through
God. I swear, my nan and pap had a pot and pan like that. Sorry. Or maybe it is. You haven't found that chap. Oh, yeah, thank you. prison and so the sun mansion oh my god Okay, so we're done in the DDR museum now. Um, we're bloody knackered, aren't we? But it yeah. was so fun because, as you'll have seen from the clips, they've got like a reconstructed um, DDR apartment um, with all of the technology and all of the decorations and everything that there would have been in like a typical apartment, which is just so cool. I loved how interactive that was. Um, yeah, it's totally different to the one earlier, but it could have been the same, you know, because it had a lot about the Stasi in it, it could have been kind of treading the same ground, couldn't it? But actually, it was way more about life yeah. and a bit more background and things that people, like consumer things that people had and cars and vehicles and buildings. So it was good that it was interactive because it set it apart from what we did this morning. Yeah, definitely. And there was like um, a lot of information about the Cold War, timelines and infographics and things. There was also a video that went through the construction of all of the sort of high rise apartment complexes. Um, and if, and you know, if people were happy and if people were satisfied living there um, by, by what the kind, what kind of goods that they could get. And it was just exactly what we wanted really from, from the, museum just to kind of understand a little bit more about what they wanted what kind of life they had um i know that sounds kind of strange but you know they were living in a completely different world well, things like they earn way more money than they could ever spend yeah so even though it wasn't a, it was probably wasn't a lot by western standards but the fact they earned 900 marks a month and rent was somewhere between like 45 and 90 marks yeah and then so you think wow they've got tons of disposable income because they've got things paid for by the state like their child care and things like that so you think wow they could buy so much these people were so well off and then it's like well they're hardly there was hardly anything to buy in the supermarkets whatsoever and things you could buy like televisions were like 10 times your monthly income yeah and that created a lot of sort of dissatisfaction. It had a lot about sport and um, where you could go on holiday and things like that as well. But I think generally speaking, people started wanting more because there wasn't more. You know, there wasn't enough to keep them sort of, you know, passing the time. They were drinking a lot. And, uh, you know, I imagine their downtime, there wasn't really much that they could do. Because bear in mind, you know, for the most part, the average person couldn't leave. Um, you know, they, if they wanted to go on holiday, they could go on holiday to other Soviet satellite states in the Soviet Union, but they couldn't actually go anywhere else. Only approved international travel um, was available, and they were mainly to kind of, you know, Although sports they, people and politicians. So I did spot that they could. There were holiday destinations that um, the approved DDR travel agents could make, and obviously it was mostly countries like Russia that they could go to. Czechoslovakia yeah. and Bulgaria and Hungary but I did notice that 1,200 people per year went to Cuba. Excellent, well, that's so really interesting. So they were allowed to go to Cuba as well. Whereas we weren't. We, we weren't, weren't allowed there. to go to Cuba until what? When? A long, long, long time after. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, and the US didn't even buy goods from Cuba until more recently. Yeah. You know, you couldn't buy Cuban cigars legally. 
Ah. And then obviously you can now. But yeah, that was it. So um, to cut a long story short, this clip's nearly four minutes long. We're um, probably just gonna see what happens now. Maybe get some food, uh, maybe get a drink or whatever, but we are leaving really early tomorrow. So that was a really nice way to round up the kind of cultural part of our trip. So let's go and get something to eat and see where the rest of the night takes us. Bye. Look at the spot we've got. It's really cool. Look at this. We've got a beer and then we've gone for the ramen bolognese and the kimchi love ramen and then obviously two beers and everything in here is vegan. So I'm just really excited. At least we're in a vegan Asian restaurant and that's what I wanted for our final meal. There's so many, it was just ridiculous. We're gonna have to come back and eat more. But uh, we'll show you the food when it comes. Okay, so this is the dry ramen with the bolognese. And that is the kimchi ramen. Tofu. Oh, that sounds great. Have you got one? No, I've just got regular. I've got regular tofu. And we've got pickled cabbage, sweet corn, broccoli, other vegetables. That's a tofu bolognese there. How's the pickles? Well, that's not really that pickled actually. We've got pickled bean sprouts though. That sounds great. I'm not gonna lie. Not spicy, not eating. <laughs> tastes like kimchi. It definitely tastes like kimchi, salty, gorgeous. It's really strong, like strong but not overpowering. Mm. You should try that. Oh well, I'm gonna dip my ladle in, mate. That's really strong. Yeah, in a good way. Mmm. It's like vegetable -y broth, really rich. Yeah. yeah, this is good ramen, guys. Yeah, this is, this is good ramen. Oh my uh -oh. god. You're going to struggle with the old choppy stickers. Yeah, I put them in the wrong way as well. I thought I'd open them the right way around. I can't. I'm, I'm not. Right, you hold them a little bit further up, just so that you're not getting your... Yeah, that's it. Remember, you only move the one. I'm not too bad when I get going. It's just hard to get started. Are your noodles the same as mine? Mm -hmm. 
Oh, these are uh, bean sprouts. Yeah. I'm going to let Pete eat his meal. He's just going to get annoyed with me trying it. But let's just say the verdict's good, right? Yeah, really tasty. Excellent. So what did you think? Because look, we've only gone and finished that mm -hmm. whole day. Finished half and half. Yeah, it was really good. Mine was quite a rich, like, tomato bolognese um, with, like, scrambled uh, silken tofu. And, um, there was some actual uh, tempura tofu as well. It was really nice. And yours had the, the kimchi in it, which was really garlic heavy. And a really rich vegetable broth had loads of ginger in there as well. And you could tell it was really fresh, almost zesty with ginger. Oh, uh, card bitter. Card bitter. Yeah, so it was just really good flavours. But you'd expect that, you know, it's a vegan ramen place. They've got to, they've got to make sure that the flavours are in there. But yeah, we're about to pay up and leave. Right. So we've got them. Schnitzel, sausages, falafel, more schnitzel, hams, wieners. That's a big, big, big sausage. sausage. Cheese, tofu, what we just had in the uh, bolognese sauce. Also got sausage, more sausage. These veggie. They actually look like real ones. It's not no. Yeah, maybe we've gone too far. Maybe that. Well, it says buy a box. Oh, no, they are. Yeah, well, there you go. Look at them. Oh, my God, look. Look at those filthy things. We're moving in. Really careful water, but you can't help yourself. I think they're real. I don't know. Either way, they've got WWF on them, isn't it? Cocktail bar. What are we gonna get? What are we gonna get? Can I have the uh, menu? Yeah. Oh, is that also a menu? Yeah. Oh, they're the signature cocktails. This is just a list of all their other ones, but these are the ones. So, the pomegranate margarita is probably calling my name. Fishes! And the menu's got part of the Berlin Wall on it. That is definitely part of the Berlin Wall. So just letting you know that we went for the pomegranate margarita and the passion mule, which they're the two that I would have got, if I'm honest. It's these summer ones as well, but... Let's have a look at the summer ones. Yeah, they sound, yeah. all, they sound all right, but I don't know. No, I don't think, no, I think I'm, I'm happy with what I've ordered. I mean, that. They're glorified gin and tonics them, you know. So I think we went with a good one there. Either way though, it is a vibe up here. And to have it like literally in our hotel room, which I didn't even know about, is really cool. Pomegranate margarita. is the passion mule. Do you want to take a sip of your cocktail? Let me know how it is. I thought a mule would be a good choice. Oh yeah, you got, look, I love a mule. Is it? I'm gonna try it. Not too tangy, not too bitter, a little bit sweet, nice. Nice. Right, I'm just going to try the passion mule because that's Pete's, but I was going to order it anyway. Ooh. That's gorgeous. It is really good. I like Moscow mules and Mexican mules. And then let's try this one. 
chance. Mmm. You know, you get the triple sec, right? It's not as sour, as salty, and as limey as I normally are. The pomegranate really cools this down in terms of its sourness, which means I'm not going to have indigestion at four in the morning when we go home. So, you know what? Cheers to that. <laughs> Just tell me what it's like. It's got a very dodgy smell. I've, I've essentially forced you to have that drink, but it's because it's got all the things that you like in it. That's a cinnamony sugary rim. Oh. That's absolutely gorgeous. Well, I'm going to have to try it now. You're not tasting the apple, you're not tasting the tequila, you're not tasting the triple set. It's just so well served together. Well, I've got to try it now. The cocktails in this bar. Yeah, They're I not thought... gimmicky. They know what they're fucking no, doing. No, I thought they'd be good. I thought they'd be good. Cheers. The ice cube is a ball. <laughs> what the hell? Right, this one's called the Spicy Kiss. So this has got Aperol. It's going to be tequila. Aperol. What else is in it? Uh, Looks like a... I don't know, but I'm going to have to give it a try. And what's this one called? <laughs> the cheesecake. Stop it. Oh, it's a New York cheesecake. Yeah, it's a New York cheesecake. Bloody hell, I can smell it from here. Go on, it smells like vanilla cheesecake. It's insane. But it's... Bear in mind, it's a fruity cocktail. Go on. I think we've got them the wrong way around. So you've got a nice masculine glass. Look, Sam's got a nice masculine glass with a big uh, ice cube in there, where it looks like an old-fashioned or something. I've got, the, I've got this. Let's have a look. Mate, this is doing the job. It's doing the job. Okay, that's really good. Yeah. How could something fruity with caramel? Well, okay. So you'd have like an apple or a pear thing with caramel it's sauce. It's meant to be a bloody right? cheesecake. It's not meant to be a tart to tan for fuck's sake. Let's you have know, a sip. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? The fish have paused. The fish have paused. Why have the fish yeah, paused? Can't fault it. Let me have a swig of this. It even tastes slightly. Tart, like an actual cheesecake base with lemon in it or something. Sorry, lemon, you know, like the cheese bit of the cheesecake with lemon in it. And even the foam, the foam gives cheesy, creamy vibes as yeah. if it's almost made with like egg whites or something it might, it to give be. it. It actually tastes like a cheese, I think a actually, cheesecake. Actually, it's, I think it is an egg white top because it's frothy. Yeah. yeah, but it would say, it needs to say for allergen purposes. Yeah, but it might be in German, so I didn't, I didn't read it. That's a bloody good cocktail. Spice Row. It's got Havana, yeah. Havana Club, seven year. Spice Row, caramel syrup, lemon juice, orange juice, and that's it. That's no, really nice. Yeah, it's really good. <sighs> okay. So we're getting up for a flight at 3 30 in the morning. So um these are gonna be our last drinks of the trip. Until tomorrow morning, they might have a beer before the flight, because you know. So we're just gonna sign off now because I don't think I'll remember to sign off tomorrow morning. I've got to like, log into work and everything when I get back. So I really hope you've enjoyed following us around Berlin. It was our first trip. Hope you enjoyed what we did. I think we did a nice mix, you know, as always, when we go away, we like exploring the local food, getting loads of vegetarian and vegan food in there, drinking, doing the local sites, and then, you know, just making the most of it and chilling. So I really hope you've enjoyed it. If there's anything that you'd recommend if you've been here before, let us know, because we're thinking of coming back. It's quite easy to get here. It's quite a short flight from where we are. And uh, yeah, we're going to sign off. 
And uh, Peter, have you got anything you want to say? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck's sake. But yeah, as you can tell, look at the fucking state. Like, we're tired. I'm drunk now and I've got to get up in a minute. These cocktails have hit me like a ton of bricks. I've got such a chubby face. <laughs> so anyway, um, like I said, hope you enjoyed this vlog series. There should be three main videos hopefully if i got the got the, enough content so uh hope you enjoyed and we will see you next time um probably our next vlogs are going to be from banff so we will see you from banff cheers auf wiedersehen good to nacht cheers Singapore. Some extra bonus footage. This is the Concorde. Look, it's an actual British Airways Concorde, and we are uh, just getting breakfast at the Manchester airport and thought we'd come to the runway visitors park and I didn't realise I think we can actually go up into the Concorde so are you ready for some bonus footage? say yes yes let's do it this is incredible ah oh, Con Concorde viewing is by guided tour only Oh, that sucks. Oh, that sucks. That would have been amazing to see. Oh, well, at least we saw the Concorde. I've never seen one in the flesh. So that's quite cool. I don't even think I've seen many on TV or anything, really. It was a bit before my time. Cords. There's two of them, little babies. <laughs>